So, hello and welcome to our eighth lesson in our study of functional analysis. Right? <clears throat> so, in this video, we'll be talking about two important inequalities which are very, very important in learning functional analysis. You can't learn functional analysis without knowing these inequalities, right? So, we'll talk about the Hudes inequality and the Mikoski's inequality. So I'm going to can read over final year students of mathematics, K and USD, and I'll be taking you through this lesson. So don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more videos and don't forget to like the video if it helps you. So um in our next lesson, that's lesson nine, we will try to verify the reason why the P norm is actually a norm. You know, we've been using the P norm since our fifth lesson right we've been that's what we've been talking about and so that p norm we would like to verify that it is indeed a norm but before we can do that verification we would have to understand these two inequalities and know how to use them right so this lesson is going to help us in our ninth lesson right so it's very important you pay attention here okay so let's go to the Hudes inequality. And actually, you know the Hudes inequality, but I didn't know it was the Hudes inequality, right? You know the Hudes inequality when P is something. And I'm going to introduce you to all these, okay? So if P is greater than 1 and Q is greater than 1, uh, such that 1 over P plus 1 over Q is equal to 1, then for all x, y in Rn, we have <coughs> this equation here. I hope we can see that, right? And that is what we call the Hudes inequality, equation one. That's what we call the Hudes inequality, right? So when p is equal to two. It has a special name, and that is what we call the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. Okay, and I know you've met this when we are trying to verify the triangle inequality. Um, this, right? If you could recall, that was what we used. Mm -hmm. Right. So. The Cauchy-Schwarz inequality is when we have p equals 2, right? So let's see if that's true or not. So you see, when p is equal to 2, we know that 1 plus p plus 1 plus q is equal to 1, right? So when p is 2, that means we have half plus 1 over q equals what? 1. And it is half plus half, which gives us what? Um, one so that means automatically q also becomes what two so that means that when p is two then q becomes two so we'll come to this equation one and we will put p equals two and q equals two there so when we do that you realize that we are going to get this here all right so we are going to get this here i hope you see that all right and Straight away, we know this can cancel this, and this can also cancel this, and this gives us this, which is the um Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. So when we remove the um in the sum, right, the summation, right, and we can get this, which we are all familiar with, right, the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. So the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality is the Hudes inequality when p is 2, okay? So that was the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. So you can see that when we are trying to um, verify that the Euclidean norm was a vector um, norm, we use the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality to help us. So when you are doing it for the mean p norm, that means you are going to use the word Hudes inequality, since that's the general one. Then, now we talk about the Mikoski's inequality, okay? So, the Mikoski's inequality is also something that you know because it's the general triangle inequality. 
and that is the triangle inequality for the p norms so if you are trying to verify that the p norm is a norm and you are verifying the triangle inequality then what you are doing is that you are verifying or you are proving the Mikoski's inequality okay so let us state it so let x and y be vectors in rn where x is equal to x1 x2 to xn so we are doing that in the field of what real numbers okay and let y be equal to y1 y2 to yn where each xi and yi are real numbers so the following lemma is credited to mikoski who proved the result around 1900 okay so if so, so this is the mikoski's inequality if p is greater than or equal to 1 then for all x y in rn we have this here so let's call this equation 2 and equation 2 is what we call the mikoski's inequality right uh -huh. so just as in the case of the hoodest inequality when p equals 2 it was called the couches um couches trash inequality with the Mikoski's inequality to when p is equal to 2 then we have it in this form all right so when p is equal to 2, when you put p equals 2 into this equation then we have what you can see here right and you can see that the, we can make some cancellations right and we have this and when we take away the <coughs> summation signs right we have this and we all know this is what we commonly refer to as the word triangle inequality and you've seen this before and you have proved that using geometry and using the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality all right so you could see that when we are proving this one because p was equal to 2 you use the hoodest inequality when p equals 2 that is the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality so that means that when you are trying to also prove the main or the general triangle inequality that's the because case inequality then you're going to use the holdings inequality to do that okay so yeah this is what we wanted to do in this video so in our next video we would prove the because case inequality and i told you that the triangle inequality for the p norm or we would show that the p norm or lp norm is indeed a norm so thank you very much and see you in the next video